Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can insert a hold onto a waypoint over with the G1000. Now, a hold, of course, uh, for those of you who are not instrument pilots, uh, you probably think of being put on hold. Uh, for those of you who are doing instrument stuff or would love to just sort of experiment with it, this is for you. So what we've done is we've just taken off from uh, Concord, New Hampshire here, making our way up. I love the little flying solo logo. I don't know if I love the blue livery yet. I'm still kind of getting the hand of that. But what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be making ourselves a couple little waypoints here. And we're going to insert some holds at those waypoints uh, so we can experience a little bit of all the fun that comes with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly construct myself a flight plan here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to set myself an en-route destination real quickly here. We're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to use Gardner, Massachusetts, uh, which is a little ways away, but it's nothing too, too bad. And then, of course, uh, we're going to add another one to, again, almost like a reverse of what we did last time here. We'll do Bath, which is going to be Barnes. And, of course, uh, what we'll do is our destination is we'll go ahead and pick in Hartford here. Keep things uh, nice and simple for us today. KHFD, enter, enter. Nice. Boop, boop. And now we have ourselves a pretty solid little plan here, and I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we don't need to suspend. We're pretty good to go. Uh, we probably want to do Dugrat Gardner real fast, though, just to kind of get us going. So we'll come over here. We'll click on that. So we have GDM, which is going to get us kind of going on the way. Enter, and we're going to hit the Activate button. We'll also go ahead and switch on Navigational Hold Mode, which is going to get us uh, kind of rotating over to the other side. Now, people are wondering, um, how is it that uh, the plane just kind of did what I did last? It's uh, one of the great things about the autopilot on most planes is that when you push the AP button, it tries to hold the wheel. So if you're nice and level like this with a nice little pitch up of about seven and a half degrees, it basically is just going to hang on to that, which is awesome. So we're proceeding direct uh, to Gardner Mass here. It's pretty far away. It's about, it says 30 minutes, but don't worry. I have time acceleration. I'm not too, too worried about it. We'll fast forward when we need to. And what I want to do is I want to insert a hold at Gardner. Now, holds are pretty dandy thing, little things. are basically going you know, to be this big old racetrack pattern in the sky that's going to try to keep us basically in one position for a little while while we have to get something set up, for example. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my handy dandy direct button. Now, when you press the direct button, uh, some people, of course, are like, menu, uh, don't worry about that. I'm going to press the direct button, menu. No, that's not going to do anything. You'll notice in the bottom right corner, there's this little thing that says the word hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. And of course, in the G1000, the other ones, is you can actually come in here and deny, dial it in. Now, this handy dandy little thing here is the course. Uh, this is basically how we're approaching our particular target. Now, right now, I want to kind of leave this alone. I don't want to be messing around with this too, too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this button. This is the word hold. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering how I'm manipulating this, you've got the big knob for pages. The little knob is for changing values. As long as you always think about it like that, you'll always be able to keep them separate. So I'm going to come over to this little piece. This is the word hold, and I'm going to press the Enter button. Now, here's the interesting part when you do a hold. Uh, you're going to notice here that it brings all these brand new components directly into our holds here. Uh, one thing you're going to see is you're going to see your inbound course. Uh, notice we can switch this. Inbound course refers to the direction we're coming at the holds, um, actual when you're doing the racetrack pattern. Remember, your hold is basically a racetrack here. The direction you're doing uh, towards the navigational fix is going to be your course. Now, for example, if I wanted the inbound leg to be due south, I could come over here and do 180. Now, you'll notice when I adjusted this, it says hold north of 180. You're probably sitting here saying, why? Uh, the reason why is because of where I am in relationship to that particular point in space. Uh, right now, my point in space down here, we're actually to the north of it. So as we're arriving, we're basically going to be shooting directly in. Uh, one thing you'll notice here that I'm on VOR mode. I'm actually going to flip my CDI here. Go ahead and synchronize my heading, and I'm going to get my whole aircraft back on track here while we're kind of scooting around with this. And, oh, yeah, exactly. And keep scooting, keep scooting, keep scooting. That's perfect. Now, one of the interesting things is while we're getting all this stuff set up, I can actually arm a navigational hold mode here. And what it will do is it'll grab it. But one of the things you're probably noticing right now is it's still on VOR mode. The reason for that, of course, is that when we originally set up our flight plan, we didn't have the GPS actually enabled. So it's always worthwhile to make sure that makes sense. If you see the word VOR and we're supposed to be on a GPS, it's a good time to turn the plane so that it makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to go ahead and rearm nav mode, and you can see GPS is in white. Sweet. Back to work. Now, if we wanted to, we could fly this entire piece uh, backwards. If I again, I go to my pages here, we can actually switch this from inbound to outbound. Notice it flips between holding north of, remember, we're going to be arriving from the north. This is going to be direct entry, by the way, Woo! Uh, to versus holding outbound, which means we're actually, this is going to be the reverse leg of our hold, and we'll be able to see the hold a little bit more clearly here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this on inbound, because I, like I said, direct entry is the best. And then we're going to go down to where it says the word leg. Leg refers to how long it's going to hold each part of our pattern. Now remember, when we usually fly holds, it's going to be a minute, 
turn, turn right for a minute, we're going to go straight for a minute, we're going to turn right for a minute, turn straight for a minute, and basically have a four-minute hold. Uh, if we wanted to adjust how long we do each component, we can actually come in here and adjust it. For example, if I wanted to make two minutes be the length of each one of my legs, that means we're going to be going two minutes, minute, two minutes, minute, basically, which is going to have an interesting impact on the whole shape of everything. And it's going to make us cover quite a bit more distance when we do that. Now, if we want to, we can actually come in here and put a 30 second hold in, but that's a little involved because once you get less than a minute, your standard rate turns are not as standard rate as they were earlier. The other thing we can do, of course, is do it by distance. Distance is awesome because distance, of course, as you know, is not going to be impacted by wind because we're using a GPS in here to make our life a little bit easier. When we set this to distance, if we want to do a four mile whatever, it's going to give us four miles every time, regardless of what we're actually going to be seeing elsewhere. Oh, this is actually a pretty good altitude. I'll go ahead and level ourselves out here. Level off, level off. <laughs> altitude, altitude, you know how that goes. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go traditional. We're going to do time. We're going to do one minute. The last thing we can do are going to be turns. This is going to be the directions that we're actually going to be turning our aircraft once we get to our particular destination. The standard is right turns, but there are many holding patterns out there in the world that are actually left turns. Uh, if it is a left turn, you can just do one of those and go ahead and adjust it. I'm happy with that. I'm going to come down here and just going to say this thing. This is the word load. I'm going to go ahead and press the load button here. And what that will do is that will actually create that holding pattern at that destination. You can actually see it right now. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Now, one of the fun things we can do here is we can actually go like this. Haha, <laughs> I've got my little cursor button. Love this thing. This is much easier to do on a, a real G1000, by the way. Ah, oh, here we go. Zoom over here. I'll make it a little bit closer. And check this out. If I adjust my range. Oh, it does it to me every time. Every time. It's okay. I'm going to fast forward. And that's a little better. So now we're actually able to see what this darn thing looks like. And now you can see very clearly here over at Gardner, our, everything's been set up for us. We have our actual up fixed point here. You can see we're going to be arriving. We're going to be executing those right turns. And you'll see that everything's kind of got like a little funky shape to it. Now, one of the things I love about a G1000 when you're flying these holds is it'll even give you little arrows so you know exactly what it is you need to do in order to get to that particular point. So now the interesting thing here is uh, when we open up our flight plan, you're going to notice this new thing here appears that says the word hold. What we've essentially done is established a hold after crossing this particular waypoint. So, you know, if I were to come in here and press enter, nothing's going to happen. If I press direct two, I don't even want to dare to press that button right now because it's going to be a lot safer to actually initiate that part. So what I will do is I'll get us a little bit closer. There we are. And now you can see exactly what happens when we transition across that particular waypoint here. So we're just about there. And again, you can see that nice little turn. I like how they've automatically shut this off for us so that you can see clearly. Now notice, as soon as we smack into this object, it's immediately activated the hold hold mode. Does that make sense? <laughs> but notice now that we're going to round this corner off. Or there's a direct entry, and we're going to start executing this hold itself. Now, there's another thing that we're going to be doing as we're in this particular hold here. And if you come down here, you're going to see this button that now has lit up that says the word SP. SP is short for suspend. Uh, what we're doing is we're suspending waypoint sequencing. Now, you're wondering, uh, why are we suspending waypoint sequencing? Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. It makes a lot of sense, actually, because we don't know how many revolutions of this hold we're actually going to have to go through, comrades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up time a little bit here so I can kind of see what everything looks like in action. And we're actually going to sit here until we cancel our hold. Now, keep in mind, now, when you're doing holds for, like, currency and stuff like that, you have to remember the fact that when you're doing these, you have to do at least one complete one for it to actually count here. Now, notice, by the way, as I'm rounding this corner here, that the hold has actually appeared itself the rest of the way. At any point, I have the ability, of course, to uh, jump in and cancel the hold, but I'm actually going to wait until our hold is finished so you can see exactly what that's going to look like kind of in the field here. So we're going to come uh, ripping around here. We're going to line back up with Gardner. You can see we got ourselves all set up here, riding in, riding in. Now, the interesting thing here is because we're still on suspend mode, when we do cross over Gardner, which would be basically a reference point if you want to think about it another way, we're just going to keep going. Uh, we're going to be keep holding until we tell it not to do that anymore. Now, as you can see, rip, there we go. We're actually entering into our first actual revolution of this whole tier. This is no longer the entry. This is the actual you know, experience, if you want to kind of think about it. So let's say we go ahead and get some uh, call back from air traffic control. Uh, they go ahead and say, all right, y'all, you can proceed on course, kind of a thing like that. You don't need to sit there uh, doing power donuts in the sky. This is not NASCAR, because we all know NASCAR would be left turns anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get out of
to this hole. And uh, this is the easy part. Uh, there's actually a couple ways to do it. Uh, one thing we could do is we could do direct bath, which is pretty easy. But what we're going to do is instead, we're going to press the sysp button. And what we've done is we have said, when I'm done now, continue with my actual flight. Now, if you actually go up here, you'll notice my currently selected waypoint is Gardner via the hold here. And you can see it's 2.1, it's 140. And I'll speed up time a little bit here and I'll kind of continue our little rip around here. But notice we are now done because we are no longer, whoops, <laughs> be careful with time acceleration. Ooh. Well, Bob, if we were uh, doing any sort of important tests or anything like that, we'll have just uh, busted our test there because we went a little outside of the hole. But that was my bad for jamming the time acceleration too hard. But you can see now, as we approach Gardner again, which is that fix, that's a handy dandy VOR, when we cross it, it will no longer be inside of the hole. Look how it's uh, kind of trying to adjust itself to get back on target here. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, uh, time acceleration is a fun tool. So now watch this. Uh, when we do get ourselves down to Gardner, this is the part that makes everybody kind of insane here. Watch this. And we'll look at what it does. Crosses over the edge of the hole. Ding! And you can see we're now back on course to our next waypoint. So as you can see, uh, setting up a hold is very, very simple. Uh, sometimes holds will be automatically inserted, if, especially if you're doing certain types of ILS approaches. You know, if I went in here, for example, my proc, uh, let's see, we want to pick a new destination. Clear, we'll go up to flight plan real quickly here. We'll go down here to destination Hartford. We'll go ahead and adjust that real quickly here. Whoops, I uh, actually want to change the airport here. Uh, destination, a little up the road. Uh, I'm going to have to change it a little later on. Yeah, runway two, that's fine. Of course, this is one we can pick all our approaches and stuff like that. But let's say we wanted to go ahead and give ourselves a direct two. We're kind of coming here real fast. Let's say we're going up to uh, Bradley, for example. Bradley, KBDL. Enter, enter. Now, if we stopped over to the proc, we could select our approach. Um, it's going to be two, four. Ba, ba, ba. We're going to do Kibby. <laughs> that cracks me up every time I see that. Would you like to fly the curse reversal at uh, Kibby? No, I don't need to fly the curse reversal at Kibby. This is not required. And of course, when we're ready, we can come down here and boop, just like that. It's not approved for GPS. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, whatever. So now the cool thing here is if there were a hold, you'll notice it would actually have appeared up in here depending on, there it is. So it'll actually do that automatically. Now, one of the cool things is you can come in here and hit clear and actually delete it out. So if you don't want to actually fly that hold, you have the ability to say no. Enjoy.